to the pitches. And one of the first things that crossed my mind was a biblical passage. Uh, it's from Ecclesiastes, and it goes <coughs> sort of uh, vanity of vanities, and so on and so forth. It says, and there is nothing new under the sun. <laughs> and so I thought of a part of my demonstration, and one of the issues was what happens when technology changes. And I have an example here of a slide rule at the time when technology was changing. And you know, a slide rule had been used for years, and then when technology changed, and when it killed, even the four bangers became available, it was now possible to do one important thing, and that is concat concatenate, which means you could take a, pop, a result of a multiplication and go into an addition without doing anything else with a, with a four banger. But with a slide rule, if you did a multiplication and followed by add, addition, what did you have to do? You had to write the damn number down, go do the next multiplier, divide, or whatever with another pair of numbers, write that number down, add the two together, or use an adder or something like that. In order to compete with that, at that time, uh, Castell made, believe it or not, a little slide rule that has a slide rule on the front and one of those little push-down eaters on the back. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and, so, and they're, they're relatively rare, but I'll pass them around. You can just take a turn and take a look at Whatever you do, please don't lose my, uh, my stylus. And if you want to reset to zero, you just pull this lever up and you'll reset it to zero. Okay? And if you're not familiar with this kind of device, when you want to put a number in, if you want to put in a five, you just put in a five. Now the next thing, if you're going to put in a three to add to eight, you just pull it down, put it in three, pull it down, and you get eight in the display. But if you have a five in there, and you want to add an eight, okay, you can't pull it down because there isn't any room, so you have to turn around and you have to go push it up and pull it over and push down. <laughs> and, and the truth of the matter is when they had these in the old days, I always thought it was easier to write them down and add them up myself. <laughs> but anyway, I'll pass it around. You can just everybody have a take a look. <laughs> The other thing he talked about this morning was cheating. And so <laughs> I'm going to talk about cheating with a slide rule. Uh, and I didn't know that that was possible until I was at a uh, garage sale. And I saw one of these. It's a little Sun Hemi. And it's not a duplex like a log log duplex and all those sort of things. So it has a solid back. And there was a fellow there who says, I need to pick that up because he says, one of those is why I got through physics class. And I thought, how in the world is that so? And he says, well, I could store my equations that I was required to remember on the calculator. And the answer is, these units have a well <laughs> in behind them. And, no. and believe it or not, <laughs> cheaters are, if anything else, you know, creative. creative. Sure. And so he said, you can write your equations down in the well and the instructor will never bother seeing it and know that you've been, you, know, you had your, he said, furthermore, there's a, a, a thing that has some conversion factors and so forth in the back, and he said, you can even put it on the back, and the instructors never noticed that I was pulling this out to check more <laughs> equations on the back. So, <laughs> so the world is like it is. Anybody wants to look at that, you can here and just pass it around. I'm going to talk then more about, you know, calculating before digital calculators were available. And, you know, the fling, the, act, the kind of thing that was one of the oldest was an abacus, or in, in Japan they called the Soroban. And I don't know if you've ever been to Japan, but when I was there in the Navy in 1955 and 56, the people there were adamant about the fact that the Japanese way of doing it was much better than the Chinese way. And the Chinese way is they had two beads above and five below. And as the Japanese said, for those you can actually put 14 in, number 14 or 15 in one row. And that's just absurd because you're trying to get in decimal. Well, it's great if you're doing hexadecimal. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> but in the, uh, in the Japanese thing, the Soroban, they call it, it has one above and four below what Japanese would tell you is uh, efficient. 
but most of the sore bands that I saw over there were four or five digits, but I found this one at a thrift store one day, and I'll pass that around. It's a 23-digit Soroban. Now, in order, to, in order to beat that, I think you, with a calculator, you've got to use a 34S, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll pass it. If you would, leave it in a sleeve. You can just take a look at that, okay? Now, let's see what else we got. Okay. The, uh, the next calculator, sort of, machine by time that came along that I'm aware of really is a thing called a three-axis uh, protractor or a three-arm protractor and if this this is a classic one it's it's one that was used in the Navy I don't know if you know like what that's for pardon jellyfish no jellyfish. it's a <laughs> there is a way somebody in about 1801 figured out a way that in those days you know to get a heading to a, a checkpoint on a shore or something. They had magnetic compasses, but they weren't all that good and so forth. So it was trouble to just use a heading from a couple of places to get your location. But this fella figured out that if you can have three points and measure the angle between the middle point and that point and the middle point on the other side and set them in this protractor, which has three legs, then you move the protractor across until the, the three lines hit the three points, and that in the center is where you are at sea. Okay? There, are, there are better units than this, but I don't have one. There also is a uh, document from the Institute of Navigation that tells you the equations that allow you to mechanize this in your calculator if you like. Here, I'll pass another one around here just let you look at that. And just, no, just you just because you're going to run out of time, I'll here's another one of these push down means you just pass it on. Take a look and pass it on. I we'll have one other thing that uh, is a uh, uh, like a Soroban or a uh, abacus, and this was put out by a, a medical firm. And their intent was to say, Indison, that's a medicine. It says, a change for the better. And so, <laughs> that's what salesmen do for you. It has on there, on the bottom it has a, a, a calculator, a little four banger. And on the top, it has a standard Chinese style abacus. And of course the intent is to say, guys, look at how much better it is with a calculator instead of the abacus. The only problem is, the damn thing doesn't work at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> and a battery change doesn't help. So, whatever. Now, let's see what else. Okay, let's look. How much current does the abacus take? <laughs> take a little energy. And, and, and a lot of patience. I don't know if you've ever used one. Really, long time. Long time. Well, when, I, when I was in Japan, uh, before we went over there, I believe it or not, bought a book on how to use a, a, an abacus or a sort of then. But I found out that the people who over there who were reputed to be able to do multiplication division faster than people could with you know some of the standard desktop computers and so forth, what that was was that they used did a lot of the mathematics in their head and used this. The, Beads only to sort of keep track of intermediate results. But when, when I was over there the, and talked to the people, the, the first thing they t had taught you to do was to add 1 plus 2 plus up to 50 and see if you got the right answer. And, uh, and I got so I could do that pretty well, but, but it was a long while. The, the people that worked in the, uh, in the offices for us in the Navy, the Japanese girls, they used an abacus or a short line for almost everything. I've never understood how that works. <laughs> There's another kind of adder, which are the rotary adders. And they're this kind where, again, you have a stylus, and I don't have one for this, but what you do is you put the stylus in and you rotary turn it, so on and so forth. Okay. Now pass one of those. These are, this one is, is a low-cost 
uh, version. But if you've read, if you read the section on older machines in the HP forum, you'll find that it talks there about the adometer, which was made by a, a reliable typewriter uh, factory in the 20s and up through the 60s. And uh, they mentioned in the forum that it's a substantial device. You can, it cost them three dollars just to get it shipped to them, and I'll pass that around. You will see that it's a substantial device. It has a real advantage over the other kind. The other kind. If you want to reset to zero, you have to individually reset each dial to zero. This one has a little lever at the end, and you pull it out, and it resets all the dials. This particular one has eighths as the lowest, uh, as the lowest circle, and the rest are as standard tenths. Now, Patrick, you, you get the sense of it. It's got a, that's a, <laughs> it's a solid machine. In order to save a little time and look at it, and I would appreciate if you would not do much with this one. They come, I didn't get that one, but the standard one comes in a nice little box like that, just really, you know, high class operation. And this one, I, I let you pass it around a look. I'd appreciate it if you don't take it out. It's, uh, it's in premium condition. But it'll give you a sense of the weight and, and, and different the quality of the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. The other, there's one other kind of adder that was was made, and that's and a, a number of them are are made to be rotary push down ones. And this is one that is the oddest one in my collection. It was made in Japan. It's called a speedy automatic. You push that down at zero, but its keyboard is like you're running an abacus. You. You do not have the ability at one time to enter a nine or eight or a seven or a six. If you have to add, you want to add, if you want to put a, a, a nine in the lowest thing, you have to get your a four and a one, four and a five or a six or a three or something, because it, if you look at it, it'll only take up to five each time. <laughs> and you have to, you have to ask yourself, maybe somebody had an idea to build this, but why in the hell they made them and sold them? That's beyond. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, now this one I would only say one thing to you I appreciate it if you handle it carefully if you look at it you will see it's been glued together once the plastic on this is really fragile it'll just okay. it'll just fracture oh, I see. why don't we put that one on the table up okay. there friend? yeah okay. that's really yeah. Yeah. And you had a little more uh, Really going to that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you look at the back side of it. This is the one. Uh -huh. uh, do you have a what? Of course. Oh. No. No. Oh, it's for you. Didn't make it to go. Okay. What else? Okay. Now it's time. Time to go back to the slide rule again. And of course, I don't know how many of you really carry the slide rule, but you know the people who really were into this were, were super nerds, one or the other. <laughs> it was a thing to have, it was a 20 inch slide rule. And I don't have a case for them, they, they came in a nice leather case. So if you wore them on your belt, you, you almost looked like you had a sword hanging down there. And uh, this one is made by K&E. I had the 10 inch one, and that was the first slide rule I had. But this one is, uh, it's a 20 incher. I got it for five dollars at a thrift store. Uh, the interesting thing about this is there seems to be some question as to how much better you get by going from 10 inches to 20 inches, and the answer is not very much. My my characterization is about the best you do if you can remember in the slide rule days at the high end, at the low end you could get four digits, and at the high end you could get three, and if you add another 10 inches. So that fourth digit or the third digit here, I'm not sure what it is, but you certainly aren't anywhere near getting a fifth digit and a fourth digit. And now, here we go. I'll just pass them around. Go, go ahead and look at them if you can. Oh. Then we have another have another slide rule. This was made in Germany by uh, <coughs> E.W. Faber, 
and it, it illustrates something else. It, I do not have the the uh, indicator, but if you look at it, it has some stuff. And people did that a number of times. Put various functions on the inside of the slide rule, okay? Mm -hmm. Which you, obviously you couldn't use the cursor and read it, but you could do other things with it. And this particular one. What you see on the inside is what looks like a standard scale centimeter scale. And so you say, why in the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Just to, to measure it as a ruler? Yeah, yeah like a ruler. Yeah. If you look at it, yeah, it's just a centimeter scale. Yeah. But if you put the, if you put the left end, the, the left end of the slider over, say, 25, okay, at, the end of, at, at 25, should be 25, should be over there, 25, left hand. It starts with yeah. 20, should start with 20, 26, oh, maybe over okay, 26, bigger part, okay, uh -huh. Which, it, it, it starts with, but I'll say, I said, said no, you set it at 30, you set it at 31, Cute. Yes. believe it or not, from the right, from the left end of the frame to the right end of the slider is now 31 centimeters, so it is over and above being a slide rule. It's an inside caliper. <laughs> now, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, there's someone here from Germany. Do you have any idea why that? <coughs> sorry, I was only yeah, this yeah. year, sorry. Yeah, the, the inside of, I have three of these German devices, and it, it's, on the inside they have a centimeter scale, and it's set up so that if you read the end of the slide at one end, then the different the distance from one end of the frame to the other end of the slide is like an inside caliper. You can put it inside and measure the... No, I will have a look at that. Okay, it, it's coming. Uh, last thing on slide rules I have for you, my beautiful, hardly used book that I use for telling me how to use my slide rule. <laughs> if you look at it, you will see that it's in pristine condition. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. You know what that is? Never used it. Never in 1946, it. if you were caught using, as an engineer, using and reading a book on how to use a slide rule, <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were really degraded in status because every engineer knows how to use a slide rule. Books like this are for this school students. And that's, that's my ambulance. One other calculator that I've got, I know, is I have a, uh, nowadays you have any number of ways you can measure area, but in the old days, you needed a, uh, one of these, right? I'll pass that around. I've just got to do it. I've got to block. Go ahead. You can pass When something comes to you, you have to pass the planimeter. It's a planimeter. And in the planimeter, the nice thing about it is you could, when I was in school, the people who used them most were the civil engineers because they used them to measure. Uh, outline of areas and they then put those together to measure volumes to decide how much earth to move from one place to the next. And so forth. But it, it, you, you set it up and you put the pointer on, you run it around, and it tells you the area that you run around. It's, it's further, further nice if you have an area and a lake in the side. Say, yeah, if you were running an island and you had a lake in the middle, you want to find just the area of the, of the uh, dry land. You run it around one way and you get the total of it. You make a, a cut to the middle, run it around in reverse, and it subtracts the, the area inside. And so you can, you can add and subtract areas by just making cuts through the area. Okay. This one, if anybody knows how to use this, <laughs> uh, this is not a slide rule. It's, it's really what I call a, it was a, an alignment chart. It has a bunch of functions on it and the slide, there is no slide. There's only a cursor 
Oh. And plate. Mm -hmm. So you move the cursor back and forth to, to, to you know, given some, a couple functions, you can find a third one still on the line. Uh, it's, it's left <laughs> over from a gunnery thing that was used to decide how to shoot mortar shells. Oh, that's a little that one. I thought it was like a crocodile Dundee slide room. Like, that's not a slide room, that's a slide room. That's, there you go, that's a slide room. Uh, one, one final thing. Well, okay. Uh, one other one. You can look at this, but I'm going to make this a gift. This is a, a slide rule that borders on not worth much. This is made by a company called Concise. Uh, what they did is they made a lot of slide rules that were used, given to people to, to give away as gifts. It's a circular slide rule. Sure. Yeah. Okay. There will be one, I, that one is just going to go on, on the, on the, the gift. And, uh, and to show you that some people use make it harder than it has to be. Here is a thing that is done for by a, a county press people and it's a percentage calculator. So you can, you can look you can look at it and read it. it. It's really like a slide rule but it's it's a very limited thing and has a limited set of scales on it. And we have even, this already. Okay. Even more Basically, is a, a readographed teacher calculator. It allows, allows teachers to to uh, make calculations of grades, uh, grades, and uh, you know, just start getting somewhere else. Finally, this is this is one of the prizes in my collection. I think. It's a can pocket triangle. It was one of the very first supposedly handheld, but certainly not pocket size. So this is an integrator? It, it is sort of a copy so. of the, the first calculator that TI made that was called the... Uh, the calculator. Cal the calculator, yeah. Cal something. Cal something. Or something. The Caltech. Yeah, it, it uses a paper tape to, uh, to print out the output rather than any kind of display yeah, and you're, you're all starting to make things. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, that's pretty much the end of, of the, the calculator bit. Now, I have one, one last kind of thing I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's that's this, and it's it's sort of odd because having looked at all this in these days, and, and even back when the first year, I decided that the people who designed slide rules didn't do a very good job. Now, if you're in a slide rule community and you say Mannheim didn't do a very good job when he made the first slide rule, which was the first modern slide rule, which has certain scales and has a slider and and has a, oh, a uh, indicator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, Jeff Carroll, it's kind of like being in church and saying, well, the Lord could have done a better job with the Ten Commandments if he just taken a little more time. <laughs> but, but what they did on the slide rules in those days is they put, for the trigonometric functions, the tangent scale, to make use to tangents, went with the bottom scale, which was one's log cycle across the scale. The sine cosine scale went on the top scale and went all the way across and worked with the A and B scale, which was two cycle log cycles across. And the reason they did that was so that they could cover the bottom half, which was from 10 to 3 years or whatever it is, up to 5 degrees 44 minutes, was a 10. But the net result was is if you were trying to do calculations and you had something you wanted to have the tangent of something, of some one angle by the sine or the cosine of some other angle, in order, you couldn't combine them directly. You had to read it from one scale and transfer it by hand up to the other scale, which sort of defeats the whole idea. Okay. So, in later slide rules, what they have is they they changed that and they made all the scales 
All the tricks you know, run with the lower scale. Okay, and and they could have done that with the original. The problem with the original ones is they didn't have as much space, and so they were trying to conserve number of scales. But what they could have done, which they've done on some later sky rules, is they simply put the science scale from five to five point four to ninety to go with the bottom scale, the tangent to, from zero from five degrees to forty five degrees to go with the bottom scale. And they put a little cursor mark on that allowed you to do what the bottom half of the old scale on the top did anyway, which was they converted for below five degrees forty four minutes, they converted it as a look as the sine equals the tangent equals the angle and radians. Okay. And so they could some of the later side would really do have it. And if they'd done that, <laughs> it would have made just a lot better slide. What we did and back in those days, if we had a new tangent, we worked on the upper scale and we computed it. Did the tangent by doing the sine divided by the cosine, which is just way it looked. That's all I have to show. Hey, I got a ton more. I can bring 30 more slide rules in or whatever, but that's about what I was planning to say, talking about how, how the old days were. So if you have any questions, I'll try. Anybody? Okay. Thank you. We probably should get a picture of Palmer and Roger Hills.